We know that uh, virtualization, server virtualization, breaks storage. Does VDI break storage too? <laughs> the um, way? It, it, Put a lot it, of pressure on them. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, so there's a couple different points on the storage uh, that that we learned. Uh, first, uh, we we were doing uh, whenever we first started out, we were doing all uh, uh, non-persistent full full uh, clones. We weren't doing any link cloning or anything like that. It mm -hmm. was all you know. Ten, we started out with a 10 gig SP, XP image. Um, and what we found out with the, the shared storage is that everything would be working fine, and then uh, any time that uh, a SQL server would, would kick off or a backup date, you know, would kick off on a server, it would kind of saturate the line, and the, the performance that the end user would see that were on VDI would slow down. And uh, I've always kind of said that, and this is, um, if the network's down, you can still play solitaire. Your end user can at least play solitaire. Where if you're on VDI and the network's down, end user staring at a blank screen. Right. And, and, and the end user is the first to notice something that's slowed down. So there's no warning or anything. Your, your phone lights up and, and, and you know, there's problems. So what we found out is that uh, uh, we wanted to get, uh, or once we found that out, we wanted to get VDI off on their own storage. And once we did that, we've been now over a year and a half with, knock on wood, uh, without a glitch. What are, you, what are you using for storage? Uh, we use the Equalogic 6500 uh, Sumo. That's a 48 terabyte uh, and, a, and a 4U space. Uh, we would do a RAID 10, so it's 22 terabyte usable, and right now we're running about 1,200 desktops on it without a problem. Yes, yeah, performing well, simple to set up, Equalogic, really yeah. easy to use, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's literally plug and play. I mean, uh, I'm on the desktop team, and or, so we have the, our VDI team, and I'm more of a server guy, and then we have our desktop guy, and that's it, and we control everything. We control our SAN, we control the, all the servers, we control you know, the image, all the scripting, all the policies, everything. So it, it made it to where we didn't have to rely on a, 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 a storage specialist to really you know, be part of our team. We don't have to go to anyone and say, hey, we need another lawn, or hey, we need this. We just do it ourselves. Doug, okay. what, what are some advice would you have for your peers out there? I mean, people are out there going, hey, that's really great. They have the same dynamics going on in their company. Sure. You know, they all want to get there, this journey. People want the cloud. They see it's relevant, it's real. What advice would you share with folks out there on uh, uh, how to go forward, your yeah. proof points, best practice? A couple of best practice points is uh, um, there, there is a lot of, of talk out there, and you know, it's like, oh, you can spin up 10,000 desktops and, and stuff. It's like, well, you know, once again, you know, be practical and realistic that you know, you're really only going to have you know, as many users in a, in a certain department on one image, which is fine. I mean, now I only have to tweak out one image to update one image or whatever for 100 desktops. Well, it's dumb still ahead. Uh, the other thing, and the, the biggest thing that I could ever say is whenever you're going to your boss or whenever your boss is going to their boss and they want to start a VDI deployment, don't, don't go to your server team and give them and say, and say hey, we're going to do a VDI deployment. And don't go to your desktop team and say, hey, we're going to do a VDI deployment. What we did is we have a, a server guy and a desktop guy, and that's our VDI team. It, because even though it's desktops, you're still on the server. But once this, once it becomes an XP it's a whole machine, new team. or once it becomes a Windows 7 machine, it's a desktop. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with us, you know, I mean, so I'm able to, you know, spin up all the ESX servers and all the hosts and get all the storage and everything all set up, and then you know, clone out machines. And then once the machines are cloned out, I kind of hand it over to him. And he does all the group policies and scripting and everything else that makes a desktop a desktop, or makes it makes what a desktop how it should work within a, a corporation. Yeah, yeah. And that has seemed to really, really work the best to where we're completely separate from everybody. So break down the old silos, create a new team, totally integrated team. Yeah, yeah. And and, and if you pull someone from the, the server side and you pull someone from the desktop side, you still have that relationship with the server side and that relationship with the desktop side. So you're no longer, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, going to the server team, going, "Hey guys, can I get this again?" You know, I mean, you're, you're, that you're everybody works together at that point. What's the biggest pain point that you see down the road that's going to be relieved by this new paradigm of virtualization and uh, cloud computing? Um, is there, is there stuff that goes away? It's just, I mean, it's new uh, challenges, but I mean, it's still got to run yeah. networks, and you got to still run applications. Sure. Um, uh, what? There's what several, changes several maybe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the fact that uh, you can go to an end user and you can say you no longer have to wait three years for a new desktop. You could you will get a brand new desktop every day, or you know potentially you can have that you know set up to where you, your end user comes in and they get a brand new desktop every yeah, yeah. day. 
Um, you no longer have to worry about viruses. You no longer worry, I mean, you still have to worry about viruses, but you know, you no longer have to worry about, you know, really taking care of them. Uh, you know, you log off, it's deleted, you log back on, you get a new machine. Um, you know, stuff like that, that you can now tailor fit an image for a department. Or if your department has a big update coming, you can say, okay, well, we're going to make these, uh, you know, 10 virtual machines. We're going to put the update on this or the new software on this. Here you go. Try it out. Have your users Slow try it roll out. it out, basically. Well, it's not, it's, it's a, a slow a rollout, but it, but as soon as they try it out, you'll go, okay, so so I'll spin up, you know, once it, once they sign off on it, okay, I'm cloning out 100 machines. I unentitle them from this 100. I entitle them to this 100. All the end you have to do is log off, log back on. They get a new image. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it doesn't work, log off, log back on. They're on the old image until we fix whatever needs to be fixed. Um, rolling out, you know, going to Windows 7. So, you know, where before, you know, that'd take forever. Oh, my God. Where yeah. now, you know, we'll, we'll spin up a, a template, a Windows uh, 7 image that uh, the that department can now test out, make sure everything works right on it. Once they sign off that it's working right, we'll clone them out. They log off. They log back on. Now the entire department is converted to it Windows sounds 7. Easy. So Microsoft must <laughs> love <laughs> VMware then, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have Microsoft on today at 5 o'clock. We'll talk great. about that. I need to come over here and ask him some questions. VMware's an enabler of Windows 7. That's good. Well, and, yeah. and, and uh, so I'm doing some, a lot of testing with the uh, View 4.5 and Windows right. 7 and stuff. And uh, so right now with XP, you know, there's still some some glitches, you know, watching video and, and, and um, you know, just any, any graphics and stuff like that You're and right. sound and whatnot. I mean, it's it's there. You can, but it's not the greatest. When you have a, a Windows 7 fat client, and if you can, you know, if you want to strip it down, strip it down, and, and just put the, the view client on there. Um, but Windows 7 to a Windows 7 virtual machine on a LAN connection, you can't tell the difference. So the graphics experience is. I, I can get Arrow. Identical. I can get. Really? Uh, I can get uh, HD video. I can get uh, um, you know Flash. Everything just works. I, literally, you cannot tell a difference. No. So. You said about 20% are, are VDI, of your clients are VDI. Yeah. How far do you want to take it and, and what's uh, stopping Right you? now, the uh, probably, you know, 80%, you know, whatever we can. I mean, so right now, uh, uh, like, you know, running Photoshop and, and so all our, our, d our designers and stuff like that, they're not really good candidates to be brought over. Um, obviously, our Mac users, you know, we can't really bring them over. Um, right. But, uh, you know, for the... the the general population of all the users, we want to convert them over. And, um, and what's slowing you down? Or what's, what's uh, we really once uh, we saw the performance boost. So, you know, going from right now with with the way everything is set up, uh, there you do take kind of a performance hit going from a full desktop over to, to virtual running XP and you know um, what view 4.0 or, or 3.1 or whatever. Yeah, right. so and there is that's just reality. So you just need the. But once um, I started beta testing uh, view 4.5 mm -hmm. and Windows 7, yep. and the fact that you can can't tell a difference, that's what we were waiting on that. And uh, so once that's out and once that's released, we're going to start uh, rolling. To so other than 4.5, what's on VMware's to-do list? Um, I, I would still love to see, uh, uh, right now, you know, I mean, you, you, I guess, you know, whenever I say you can't tell a difference between the desktop, you know, it's probably 80, 85% there, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. I would still love to see 100%. I would love to see, I would love to be able to put Photoshop people and, and, and Illustrator people on uh, a virtual machine. Uh, and, and until that is reached and until you can do that on a WAN connection is reached, I think there's still improvement, right? But they're getting better. Closing the gap, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's definitely getting better. So Good. Um, we got to kind of wrap up. I know you got to go, um, and we got another guest coming on. But uh, you, your vision of the future? What's what are you excited about? I mean, I mean, obviously you're in IT. IT is it powers the organizations. It's changing to this consumption model. You know, VDI, virtual desktops, mobiles here. People want iPads and iPhones. Yeah. These are the big big stories that are going to come out tomorrow. Yeah. What, what gets you excited about the future in terms of uh, the role? I mean, you're more of an architect now. You're delivering bigger systems. What particular um, thing gets you most excited? Uh, solid state hard drives are, are, are I, I did some testing uh, with Equalogic on their solid state SAN, and I got to say performance on those were incredible. Mm. Um, uh, so that's, you know, one thing. Uh, more, you know, uh, you know, whenever View 5.0 comes out, I mean, I'm, you know, excited to see whatever improvements they can do to, to see what I can, you know, what, how much better it can be. I mean, you know, can we, you know, finally do true gaming on a, on a virtual machine? And, 
you know, that, that not, not that next we level actually do the gaming, but next level performance, yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. I want to be able to, to, to give VDI to an end user, and an end user is excited about getting it instead of going, hey, we're going to give you this thin client, we're going to give you this virtual machine, and, they're, and, and even though it works great for business uh, stuff, I want them to, to be able also be excited about, hey, not only does it work you know, for business-wise, but it also does everything that I shouldn't be doing while I'm working. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the end user Make them feel like a real power PC kind of thing, experience. Exactly, yeah. 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 And, and that's something that, that's an argument I've always had is that I've always you know, kind of used uh, the comparison of, hey, you know, I don't get Arrow whenever yeah, I have yeah. a, a virtual machine. And everyone always says, well, you don't need Arrow. That's not really It's you know, not just a, a spreadsheet thing. objective. Hey, cut some costs, be more efficient. It's like deliver value to the customer. Right, you know, I don't need air conditioner whenever I drive to work, but it's nice to have. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it, it it's it's just something that it's like you have a few I, I hot want days. to, yeah, <laughs> the three you need them. Yeah, well, we're in St. Louis, so yeah, it's yeah. a little bit longer. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's something that that I just want to, uh, I want them to strive for the best, and and I want to, yeah, I yeah. want to eventually have them deliver the best. Yeah, and, and I think they will, or I hope they will. You know, so. Doug Westhoff here on the Cube. He's in the Cube only on SiliconAngle.tv, where you can see all the.